Now, the second component of citing things in the MLA citation format is the works cited list. Now, the works cited list is where you put all of the details about your sources. Uh, this lets you keep the in-text citations brief, so it's easier on the reader. The works cited list then gives all the details with the result that both you're giving credit to your source and being fair, and also you're showing the reader what the source is so that the reader can see Yes, this is a reliable source. Now, there are a lot of different types of materials you may quote from in your paper, and so there are a lot of different types of uh, ways of setting up items in the work cited list. This is really where having a good style manual does you well, uh, because it would be way too much of a waste of the storage space in your brain to memorize exactly how to set up a journal article or a magazine article or a website or a, a book or a movie or a record album. Um, whereas, uh, if you know the basic general principles, that's enough. Also, if you have a good style guide, you want to know where to look it up. So, for example, in this book, uh, if I'm doing MLA style, there's a tab here that has the MLA format. And if I go through, I can see um, how to cite uh, articles in journals, newspapers, uh, freestanding digital files, you name it. It's in here. If you don't have a good style guide, this once again is where you want to find, know where to look things up online. Don't bother memorizing things, especially with modern technology and how things are changing very rapidly. Uh, even if you have a good book, it may be out of date by the time it even gets to you because it takes a long time to print a book. So if you either don't have a book or your book is either sketchy or old, uh, go online, look up the Purdue Online Writing Lab. If you do a web search for Purdue OWL, uh, that one gets updated so you can be sure that's going to have the most up-to-date information about exactly how to format the items in your works cited list. And by the way, the Purdue OWL has more than just the MLA. Uh, I know it does the APA as well. It may also do Chicago, and it may even do some of the other more obscure styles. So if you don't have a good book, uh, go online to look up the Purdue OWL for the information you need. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how things are typically set up. Um, so, for example, if you have something from a book, uh, you would start with the author's name, and you'll use the last name first, and I'll go into that more in a moment. So if I've quoted something from Henry Ford, I might have Ford, comma, Henry, period. And then, by the way, this isn't a real book, I'm just making it up for the purposes of this exercise. Um, you'd have then, after the author's name, you'd have the title of the book. my life in industry. This will be underlined if you're handwriting. Uh, if you're on a computer where you can do italics, italics is the standard way to do it. Italics and underlining are interchangeable. They both mean the same thing. So you have the title of the book uh, in italics or underlined. And then you'll have what's called the imprint which is the publication information about that particular source. Um, so, something like that. So what you have then is the place the book was published, uh, the publisher of the book, and the year it was published. So that's how you would set up a book in a works cited list. Now, <coughs> you may have something that comes from a magazine article, say. In that case, we would have, again, the author's name, last name first.
Then we would have the title of the article in quote marks. And then we would have the name of the magazine italicized or underlined. Uh, italicized is the preferred format, but if you're handwriting, it has to be underlined. And then you would have the date of the magazine. Something like that. So, now we're looking at a couple of issues. One is, you'll notice we have the last name first, um, and that is because in the MLA Works Cited list, we put things in alphabetical order by last name. What this means is it actually makes things a little bit easier because um, if you're quoting from the same source multiple times, you only need to list the source once because it's all alphabetical you don't list it in the order it shows up in your paper. Uh, and you sort things alphabetically. That way, the reader will see the in-text citation <coughs> that says Ford, and then the reader can come to the works cited list and look for Ford. So when it's alphabetical that way, this is nice and efficient. Uh, one of the things that happens with some styles of citation, you're supposed to put the citations in the order that they show up in your paper. And in that case, if you've used a source more than once, you have to have some way of listing it more than once. Whereas in the MLA style, uh, you can use this thing in any order, no matter what. Uh, it's going to be there in alphabetical order so the reader can find it. Now, things get a little more complicated <coughs> if you have something from a website. And this is one of the areas where things change rapidly in terms of the accepted order for things to be in and the types of information. Now, in my classes, I'm not particularly picky about exactly what order the information is in, but it does have to be complete information. You cannot put just the web address of something and call that your works cited list. That does not give the reader enough information. So, if you're quoting something from the internet, you're going to start with the author's name. And by the way, even if you don't find a particular human being as an author, uh, you want to look for an organization to credit as the author. If you've got something from a web page, um, then usually the organization that runs the web page, that's going to be your author. So say I got some statistics from Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And, oh, again, I'm making these things up, so. So that might be the title of the article. Uh, the, then I might have the name of the website where this shows up. And, once again, italicized or underlined. Uh, then you might have uh, the date this article was last updated. Um, and then you would have the web address. And then you might have the date you looked it up. Now, this is kind of flexible and vague, but we do have uh, ju the, not just the web address. 
we have a whole bunch of other things besides it. So we've got the author, which in this case is a corporate author. We have the name of the article in quote marks. We have the name of the website, underlined or italicized. We have the date the article was last updated or was written. And by the way, a lot of websites, you won't find that date. If you look at your website and you can't find a date on the website for when it was updated, don't worry about it. Just leave that part off. You have the address of the website. And notice it's not just mad.org. It's mad.org slash statistics slash New Mexico. You want to give complete information about that as well. And then the date you looked it up. Now, sometimes you may get something from a website uh, that was originally published someplace else. In that case, in addition to all of this, you would also mention the <coughs> original publication information, where it was printed before it was on the internet. And as I mentioned, uh, at least for my classes, I'm not going to be super picky about getting everything in order or having the punctuation exactly right. What I'm looking at is, do you have complete information here? <coughs> Uh, do I have enough information that I know this is a good, reliable source? Is there enough information that you're giving good credit to the source? So that's what I'm looking for in the Works Cited list. Not uh, all the details, but do we have a complete listing? Oh, and by the way, one other thing I ought to mention. Uh, what, when do you use italics or underlining as opposed to when do you use quote marks? <coughs> and I should have mentioned that earlier. You use quote marks for little things. So we use quote marks for the article. We use italics for a book. Uh, we would use quote marks for a chapter within the book. Uh, we would use quote marks for a song, italics for the record album the song was on. Not that very many people use record albums anymore. Uh, but that's the thing to remember. Quote marks are for little things. Italics are for big things. <coughs> so that's one of the things you can remember as you're setting up your works cited list. <coughs>